The scripture says in chapter 1 of Mark, verse 35, In the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. You think about when you get up in the morning, how much of the world crowds itself into your thinking. You have to get dressed, of course, and eat breakfast, and you've got to get in your car and drive down the expressway or somewhere and finally get to work. And as soon as you do, it's chatter, 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 chatter all the day. Or oh, the keyboard's flying all the day and your mind is full. Then you've got to get back in your car, get back on the highway, and, uh, and dodge the traffic again all the way home. And when you get there, you undress and try to relax, and then there's dinner. I can fill up your day and not even know you. And so where is God? Where is, where, where is God's private time with you? So where do we begin with our priorities? First and foremost, we must make certain that our top priority is God Almighty. Jesus Christ said it this way, Seek first the kingdom, and all of these things shall be added unto you. So many times we have it backwards. We are pursuing all of these things, and we've forsaken the king and his kingdom. So many times we want the things that God promises without doing what God requires in order for the promise to become ours. God told the children of Israel, if you obey my voice, if you heed my commandments, I'll make you the head and not the tail. He said, make me your priority. Be as consistent as you can. Give it everything you've got every time you get up to go. Because you have no idea when you're not going to get the chance again. It's the supernatural law of breakthrough. It's when you do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again that you begin to see the mountain of impossibility begin to move. Prayer and perseverance go together. If you're going to become a person of prayer, you will be a person of perseverance. Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. God has said he will give you everything you need for life and godliness. He said you don't have to worry about what you'll eat or what you'll wear or where you'll live. That God knows you need those things and if you'll seek first his kingdom, he'll give you all of those things. But we flip it around and say, God, I'll seek your kingdom first when I get all of those things accumulated. Trust God on a daily basis to say, Lord, you met every need I have today. And I believe you'll meet my needs tomorrow. So I'm going to leave that with you now while I lay down to rest tonight. You know, in the Bible, the, the day begins with sundown. And we go, to re we go to sleep while God begins the day. And the sun rises and you awake to join God in the day that he's already been diligently working at for several hours. So when you lay your head down at night, Lord, I trust you for all the provisions I'll need tomorrow. The time I'll need, the wisdom I need, the resources I'll need. When we talk about a life of prayer, we're not talking about once in a while. We're talking about that every day you sense the need, the desire, and the joy, and the awesome power that comes through praying, talking to the Father. That is, it ought to be a habit, something that is recurring in your life. Not just when you get in trouble, when you get in need, but because you love God because you're grateful for who he is and what he's doing in your life. Pray about everything, everything that comes up. Just pray. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Pray about everything. You don't have to be on your face or on your knees or in a closet or in the dark or with your eyes shut. It's good to have those set apart times with God. I have that every morning, but pray your way through the day and don't let the devil lie to you and tell you that God doesn't hear your prayers. You say, yeah, but the, the things that I've done wrong, why is God going to listen to me? Because you don't go in your name, you go in the name of Jesus. In the morning when you get up amidst the, your prayer or before you, when you're meditating, before you even get out of the bed, you should say, Lord, I just want you to fill me with your spirit today. You can't live a godly life unless you have a good prayer life because the prayer life keeps you connected to Almighty God, sensitive to His will and His purpose and His plan for your life. You don't pray, you won't live a godly life. How are we building our life? 
I spent so many years going to bed at night regretting what I spent my day doing. And I don't want to do that anymore, and I don't want you to do it. I want to go to bed at night and be proud of what I got done that day. You know, waste of any kind is sad, and certainly the waste of an entire life is the saddest of all. How many of you know somebody that has just wasted their whole life? I will not live like that. I am not going to get to the end of my life and have nothing left but regrets. And the only way that you can not have regret tomorrow is to do what's right today. Today, we need to start making right choices. If God is dealing with you about anything in your life and you know that you need to be obedient to him and you're putting it off for another day, I think tomorrow is maybe the most dangerous word that we have in our English language. I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. Well, what if Jesus comes today? I'm yelling to somebody, get up. It's time to get up and start doing something with what God has given you. Every day that you spend feeling sorry for yourself, it's a totally wasted day. It's completely unproductive. It does not help your future in any way, shape, or form. It just keeps you stuck in the same spot. We, we have to get over thinking that everything should be easy for us. I'll tell you a phrase I would like to see you get out of your collection of phrases that you use. Let's get rid of this statement. It's just too hard. But, but it's just too hard. You know what? Nothing that God leads us to do is too hard. See, it's foolish to think that we cannot do what God tells us to do and still have things work out right. How many things do you believe that God has put on your heart that you should do or not do, but you still have not obeyed him? Are you living your life on purpose each day, working toward the purpose you feel that God has for your life? And your purpose can change at different seasons in your life. Give yourself to what you're supposed to do in this season of your life. Bloom where you're planted and don't get so addicted to your plan that when God wants to change it, you won't let go of it and go do something else. And don't minimize whatever it is that God wants you to do right now. Don't minimize that. Knowing that he's in charge, it doesn't make any difference what happens, how it happens, through whom it happens, for whatever reason, I know that God is in control and I can trust him for whatever he allows in life. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. He listens to you, you listen to him. You obey him, he guides you. There's an awesome sense of intimacy in a life that trusts God. And if you want to know whether you're a trusting person or not, ask yourself this question, what am I worried about? Whatever you're worried about is God's long, awesome finger saying, you're not trusting me at this area of your life. A godly life is a life of trust. And when you begin to focus on God, here's what happens. Worries drift away, concerns drift away, your, your mind is no longer contaminated with all kinds of things that do not do you any good at all. The wise way to live is to obey God then leave all the consequences and circumstances to God. It, it, you see, you have, to, you, have to you, you have to choose some things. You have to choose to go with them or with God. Have this or have God. Walk this way or have God's way. The reason we don't do things that are absolutely sacred, godly, awesome, life-changing, lifting habits is because we've decided to choose the world's way. You'll never understand or be able to enjoy life at its best until you surrender your life to Christ. You may be walking through a difficult season and there may be some very uncomfortable places in your life, but I suspect there's something you can be thankful for. We wanna to learn to give thanks to the Lord. It is a protection over your heart and your mind. Become good at being grateful. Be grateful for the people in your home. Be grateful for the people that live around you. Be grateful for the place where you can work, the people that you work with. I don't want you to spend this whole year talking about if. 
I want you to start this year and end this year saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you heard me. Thank you, God, that you have enough for me. Thank you, God, that you're making a way. All of us will have an opportunity every day to place God somewhere. He does not want to be second place. He does not want to be picked third or fourth. But he said, I am God and beside me there is no other. And so I have made up in my mind, even though it might not be flashy, even though it might not, might not be something that people laud and applaud and commend, I've decided in my mind every day with his help, I'm going to place him first in my life. Because I believe that success in living for God is not an emotion, it's not a buzz, it's not a feeling, it's squaring our shoulders back and saying, Lord, I'm placing you absolutely first in my life. Our allegiance must be to God first. But you know, here in Western culture, we've got plan A when we get in trouble. If that doesn't work, we can go to plan B. We got plan C, plan D, plan E. You know, we got insurance, we've got the doctor, we got family, we've got this, we've got that, we belong to the union. There's all these different things that we can rely upon. And I think perhaps, though those things can be good and beneficial, I think there's a danger where we suddenly shift our trust from God to all of these other things. And when trouble comes, we look to everything else first and God becomes our last ditch effort after the insurance has failed and the doctors have failed and the union can't help and our friends can't help. You know, we had plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E, plan F, and now we've got to go to plan G, God. And I'm not saying God will help you, it won't help you if that's been the case. He's very gracious and long-suffering and merciful and slow to anger, but he's not honored when he's put last. He's not honored when we've gone to everyone and everything else first and we only go and seek God after the arm of the flesh has failed. We should go to him first when we're faced with conflict. And I think some of you will find that if you will go to God first, you're not going to have to fight the battle that you thought you'd have to fight after all. God will intervene in ways that you never imagined possible. If there is any message that is loud and clear throughout the pages of Holy Writ, it is that message which admonishes us to put God first. God says put me first and everything works out better. But I tell you, your week go better when you put God on the first day of the week. Your week will not flow if you use the first day of the week as your golf day. It will not flow if you use it as your fishing day. It won't flow if you use it as your family day. But I declare that if you start your week out by putting God first, your whole week will go better. So the whole lesson of the scripture is put God first. Wise King Solomon, who spake 3,000 proverbs and did sing 1,005 songs, this man in writing to his son and leaving it on record for us, said in that third chapter of Proverbs, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, not some, but in all of thy ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct thy path. We need to put God first. Even when you're a young person and even an older person that's seeking a lifetime mate, you don't need to judge them by where they work, how much money they make, how much education they have, what kind of car they drive. When that person seeks to be your lifetime partner, you need to hold that person 
up beside the word of God and put that person in your heart for prayer and ask God whether this is my lifetime partner. A lot of people wouldn't be stuck where they are if they had acknowledged God first. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. You see, we honor God, we demonstrate faith, and we unlock blessings when we put him first. Your problem is not a problem to him, and we should go to him first and foremost. And if you do that, you find out you may have not have to go to a lot of other things that you were looking to. Prayer and the Word, the promises, before earthly help, before human wisdom. And yes, God uses human vessels to bring his answers. Yes, he uses people as his instruments of deliverance many times. And thank God when he does it, but it's still true. If we do not ask, we do not have. I place him first in my life and then watch him work. Just put God first in those plans. Your plans are not wrong. You're trying your best to follow after the will of God. But put him first in those plans. Insert him at the beginning of those plans and give him license to change whatever he needs. Your plans are okay, but put him first. Be open to his direction. It is fascinating that the decision to put God first has nothing to do with what's going on in the world around me or what my present state of resource is. It is simply a decision and a deliberate action in my current reality. When should we put God first living into practice? Right now. Shouldn't we wait till we get more stuff? No, what do we have in our hand right now? Whatever you've got, start putting him first right now. The power to put God first is already in our hand. Wake up every morning and just start thanking him for just your life, your kids, your job, your house, your food, your clothes, your money, your car, your husband, your boyfriend. And then immediately after that, you'll have a better day. God must be first but you need to settle it in your heart as if the choice were eminent God first and included in that thought is leading our families into the same mindset and unshakable heart conviction that God must be first in our lives think of what Joshua said as for me and my house we will serve the Lord I'm gonna lead them into this thing if you'll put God first in your life and talk to your kids, this is why we go to church. This is why, you know, daddy reads the Bible. This is why we give God the first part of our income. And they will see the fruit of that in your life. The Lord does need to be first when it comes to our families. If it was within my power to give a gift to every person under the sound of my voice, it would be an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to us. To train our ears to get up in the morning to hear what God is saying to us. When God speaks, He's never wrong. When God gives direction, He's never out in left field. He knows what He's doing. Can I say it like this? There is not a greater time than right now to live a God-first life. There's nothing you cannot do if you and God are doing a righteous thing. The impossible can be done. It can be done. It can be done. Stop saying if. Say, I will by God's grace. Stop saying it's impossible. Nothing is impossible to those that believe. Nothing. Stop saying, I don't know the right people. You know, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, those people have lots of power. 
master the art of forgetting the past. Paul says, forgetting those things which are past and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press toward the prize of the calling of, of Christ Jesus the Lord. Today is a new day. This day is a new day. What's your day like? If he's not in your day, if he's not in your schedule, if there's no prayer time, if there's no Bible reading, if there's no feeding of your spirit, if there's nothing that hardly acknowledges God all week long, all you are is a, is a trunk Christian. You, you have him in the car in the trunk and you pull him out happy hour every Sunday morning. I'm telling you that he will affect your schedule. Every day there ought to be a prayer place. Every day there ought to be time spent in the Word. Did you know that if you read the Bible 15 minutes a day, you can read the entire Bible through every year. It doesn't take huge amounts of time, but it's just scheduling it in and saying, you know, I must read the Bible and I must pray. These are important things. And if you'll do it, if you'll read the Word, the Word will read you. And dusty Bibles lead to dirty lives. And if you'll read this book, it'll clean you. It'll cleanse you. It'll sanctify you. It'll set you free. It'll help you. It'll strengthen you. And you may not need that word that you read that morning. You, it may mean, or that night when you go to bed and you open it up, it may mean nothing to you. You just read it. But the next day at about three o'clock when all hell's breaking loose and the Holy Spirit will remind you of the very words you read last night, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And suddenly a confidence comes because you've had him in your schedule. When you wake up in the morning, don't have a prayer list. Have a list that says this. This is what's bothering me today. Have you ever tried to pray and your mind wanders? You know what your mind is wandering to? What you really ought to be praying about. And your mind is wandering at this anxious thought about money or something, and you're trying to be religious and pray these nice prayers. You'll either pray or you're worried. And your old worry list is your new prayer list. Consult the Lord, pray about it, ask him, ask him. That's your duty. That's your responsibility to ask the Lord about everything. Before you buy a house, consult the Lord. Pray about it. I don't want anything that he doesn't want me to have. I know that what he gives me, he will maintain. He will take care of. I don't want it to become a problem because I didn't consult the Lord. That's why it's so important just to maybe at the beginning of the morning to spend some time in worship, spend some time in your car saying, God, today I consult the counsel of the Lord and I don't know what I'm going to face, but I just ask you to give me wisdom and I just ask you to make me spiritual today. And I just ask you to wake up my spirit and my ear to hear because I really don't want to lean on my own understanding, but in all my ways, I acknowledge you and you will direct my path delights God when we stop long enough to say, I need guidance from the Lord. It delights him. He said, I'm your shepherd. And I love it when you ask me to lead you. So often we think, well, Lord, I can come and pray about the big things in life. You uh, know I can take care of the little things in life. Oh, no. Pray about everything. In fact, when you have your devotional time in the morning, and I hope that you do, Pray about the whole day. Just take your calendar and just go through the whole day. Pray about everything, and the Lord will give you guidance. What do you do when trouble comes? Do you turn to a bottle? Do you turn to appeal? Do you turn to screaming? Do you turn to anger? Do you turn to depression? Do you turn to fear and worry and anxiety? The real sign that Jesus is first in your life. You, you meet someone who he's first and it's not that they're exempt from trouble, but when trouble comes, they know who to run to. I will lift up my, he, my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. I run and cling to him in trouble. My first thought is not the bank. My first thought is not the doctor. My first thought is not this or that. My first thought is Jesus. Who do you run to in trouble? That's a real sign of whether or not he's first. And when he's first, he will bless you in ways that will astound you. What if you would decide today 
to give God your all. I mean, that's it. I'm going to, I'm making the commitment. I'm going all out for God. And you're either looking at the enemy or you're looking at the angels. You're looking at the problem or you're looking at the promises. And one thing that we need if we're going to live a victorious powerful life is the right perspective. You have to see what God sees. No matter what you're going through, don't get your eyes on the littleness of your problem. He's working all things. There's a big picture to every trial, to every challenge, to every adversity we go through. There's a big picture and he's working all things together for the good to them that are called according to his purpose. Perspective is important and pray every day. God show me the big picture. Show me and help me to keep seeing the big perspective of what you see, not just the temporal situation that is, that is causing me to be fearful and worried. Get God's and see God's perspective. If you want victory in your life, you've got to constantly pray, Lord, open my eyes and let me see the best and let me see the good and let me see the bigness of what your plan and purpose is for my life. Did you this morning get up and saying, I am commanded by God to restir my joy, to rejoice? When you come to a place in your life where you face important decisions, can't afford to use your intellect alone. We're supposed to be guided by the Holy Spirit. We are supposed to seek the counsel of the Lord on everything. You have to learn to ask before you act. You have to learn to ask before you get in covenant with people, before you start businesses, before you do things, and then you just expect and hope that God will back you up. If you're picking a spouse to marry, you better consult the Lord. You better ask the Lord's counsel. Should it take that job? You better ask the counsel of the Lord. And this sounds so silly, but I'm amazed at how prayerless we become. I'm amazed at how many, even in my life, how many decisions I make and I haven't even asked the counsel of the Lord. And the Lord said, now you can't afford to be making intellectual decisions because you think you know everything. I need you. I wait on you to wait on me. And you don't just rely on your intellect, even though God gives us intellect to make wise decisions. But it's kind of a, ego and it's kind of pride to proudful to not pray about it pray about it if you will seek his counsel god already has a solution if you will seek his counsel god already has a procedure there's an unseen hand that wants to guide our lives and why wonder if most of the problems that we face could not be solved and we wouldn't get in them but we did not consult the Lord. If you've got a prayer place, if you don't have one, get one. Because when you go there, that is holy ground. And God knows that you're very present. In other words, you're saying, this is so important that I'm coming and I'm waiting. I'm not telling you what to do, nor am I asking you for anything. I'm waiting on you. When we stop working, God starts working. When we stop working, God starts working. When we stop working, God starts working. But when you stop and you say, here I am. I'm wrestling with a lot of stuff. I really need wisdom. I really need you to do your will. I don't even know what path I need to take. But I'm waiting on you. I wonder, I wonder if we would take time, if we would, if we, if it would never be said of us from this point tonight, they sought not the counsel of the Lord. I wonder how many, how many blessings we would step into just by learning to wait on the Lord. 
spend time in his presence. Every day say, God, fill me with your spirit and give me all the gifts of the spirit that you want me to have so I can serve you in a powerful way. Father, whatever plan or scheme the enemy has plotted against me for this day, I overturn it right now in Jesus' name. You are running my life, not him. When you're in tough times, the enemy will work overtime trying to convince you that the problem is too big. You'll never get out of debt. That child will never turn around. He knows if he can keep you defeated in your thoughts, then he can keep you defeated in your life. The battle is taking place in your mind. When thoughts tell you it's never going to change, you can't take it anymore, instead of thinking those weak thoughts, drawing in more weakness, turn it around. Yes, this problem is big, but I've been armed with strength for every battle. I am full of can-do power. What God started in my life, He's going to finish. If you're going to fight and win, you got to know who you are and you got to know whose you are, who you belong to and who you are in Christ. Listen, without him, we're absolutely nothing. We can do nothing, but through him, we can do all things that he wants us to do. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. If God be for me, who can be against me? If God is on my side, whom shall I fear? Every morning when you wake up, you need to power up. Get your mind going in the right direction. This is going to be a good day. I can handle anything that comes my way. I am strong. I am confident. I have the favor of God. Angels are watching after me. I'm excited about my future. The Bible says in Romans 4.23 that we need to have a fresh attitude every day. Your attitude belongs to you. Now listen, your attitude belongs to you and nobody can make you have a bad one if you don't want to. I believe God is working in my life and I am expecting something good to happen to me today. It's just as easy to believe that something good's going to happen to you as it is to believe something bad's going to happen. All through the day, I am well able. I will overcome this obstacle. I will defeat this sickness. I will rise out of lack and struggle. When you think like that, the creator of the universe goes to work. Miracles are set into motion. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't start thinking that it's not going to happen just because it hasn't happened yet. Can I tell you, it does not take any courage to quit. Anybody can do that. But only strong people can hang on to your dreams when there's nothing, no reason to make you ever think that it would come to pass except what God has put in your heart. At the start of the day, you need to set your mind for victory. Don't let just any thoughts play. You have to think thoughts on purpose. If you wake up and just think whatever comes to mind, thoughts will tell you, you have too many problems. You're too tired. You'll never overcome this obstacle. Nothing good is going to happen today. If you don't set the tone for the day, negative thoughts will set them for you. Before you check the phone, before you read your email, before you see what the weather is like, you need to think on purpose, power thoughts, victory thoughts, abundance thoughts, can-do thoughts. I get up real early in the morning. I like to get up when it's still dark. And I just tell God I love the quiet. What about if in every marriage, each person would get up every morning and in their prayer time say, God, show me what I can do for my wife today. Show me what I can do for my husband today. Or before you come to work, Father, show me how I can be a blessing to the people that I work with today. Show me who I can compliment. Show me who needs to be encouraged. Show me what I have that I'm not even using that somebody else at my office desperately needs. Don't approach, don't, don't approach relationships any longer for what the other person can do for you. Instead, approach every relationship from the foundation of being a servant and a blessing. God has got a wonderful life plan for every single one of you. Every single one of you, God has got a wonderful life plan for you. 
You do not have to sit in the audience of life and watch other people have a good life and think it's only for them and not for you. God has got a good life for you and it is never too late to begin again. It is never too late for a fresh start. You can begin again. And you never know on any given day when you get up exactly what God may lead you to do that day. I have opportunity every morning to get in the trash can with the devil or to remember who I am in Christ and to think about things that are going to minister life to me, not things that are going to minister death to me. What if you took a couple of minutes every morning before you leave the house and say what God says about you? Make this declaration of faith. I am blessed. I am prosperous. I am redeemed, forgiven, talented, creative, disciplined, focused, confident, secure, prepared, qualified, motivated, valuable, free, determined, equipped, empowered, anointed, accepted, and approved. Not average, not mediocre. I am a child of the Most High God. When you wake up, before you read anything else, before you look at your phone, you read a portion of scripture before you get out of bed. That's making his word the first word. You're gonna be amazed at how much this simple habit will strengthen your life. You're gonna find your patience going up. You're gonna find your um, anxiety going down. Uh, it, it's gonna make major changes in your attitude. It will strengthen your life and it will bring the blessing of God in your life. When you get up in the morning, you ought to open the Word of God. Oh, well, I don't necessarily need that. Yes, you do. And unless we're anchored in the Word of God, what's gonna happen is we're gonna find ourselves giving in. And so, what's the anchor? Well, what anchors you? When a storm hits you, what anchors you? Or do you just drift along with it? The Word of God is our anchor. You wake up in the morning and you read what you need. Where are you struggling? Don't, don't make it a religious thing, just make it a real. Are you, are you discouraged? Are you dealing with fear? Read what you need. When I wake up in the morning, I have a Bible reading program that I read through the Bible in a year. But many times if I'm struggling in a particular area, I'll go to that particular scripture or that text that says what I need and I read what I need. And then what you do is that you just bring it up, load your mind with a scripture. When the devil attacks your mind, you have a scripture loaded in your spirit for whatever it is that he's attacking you with. And when the devil attacked Jesus, Jesus said, it is written. Jesus had scripture loaded in his spirit. The devil attacked him and he said, get behind me, Satan, for it is written. And that's what you need to say to him the next time he attacks you. Wake up and speak God's word every morning. Just for four or five minutes, wake up and speak God's word and just see what happens. I know some of you are skeptical. You don't think there's much to this. It feels perhaps to you like self-empowerment or self-reinforcement. That's not what this is. I'm not saying speak your words. I'm saying speak God's word over your life. Speak God's life and light over your life and your relationships, over your attitudes, over your decisions. God says that his words are, are like, his word is like seeds that get planted and bear fruit and that they always bear fruit. His words always bear fruit. They never return void. They never come back empty. Whenever you plant the seed of God's word, it's gonna bear fruit. And, and so that's what we wanna do. We just wanna start planting some seeds. And for some of you, you're gonna plant some of the seeds in God's word and the fruit's not gonna come right away and you're, you're gonna feel like it's not really making any kind of difference or impact. I'm saying just try it. Just, just try this for a little while. Speak God's word into your life. Plant some of these seeds. See what happens. The enemy will, will try to start your day off telling you that your sins uh, have condemned you, that there's no coming back, that you're a prisoner of your past. And so for some of you, you need to start your day off and, and you need to just speak this truth over your life. I am not condemned by my sin today. I, I have been set free by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 8, 1, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I'm not condemned, I'm not a prisoner, I'm not gonna live like it today. The truth of God's word is that I'm set free, so I'm gonna live like a free man. And the enemy will try to, to wake you up and speak words of hurt 
The enemy wants you to have a hard heart and bitterness towards others, and so he'll remind you of pain that was caused to you in hopes that you will bring that pain into this next day. And so for some of you, you, you have to tell yourself this. I tell myself this sometimes. I have plenty of grace to give today because I have received God's grace. Because I've received God's grace, I've got grace. You need some grace? I got grace to give you. I've got so much grace from God, I have it in abundance to give to anyone who needs it today. Because there's something within me that is wanting to speak a different word. Oftentimes, the words I'm telling myself is, I don't got anything left. I'm I'm empty, I feel frustrated, I, I don't have much patience left. That's not true. The truth is, I am a child of God, who has been filled with the grace of God and I've got it to give. And so you you speak this truth into your life. It's not wishful thinking, it's not self-empowerment. It is you speaking God's truth into, into the darkness. The enemy might try to tell you that you don't have a purpose, that you're wasting your life at your job or your school, you don't have anything special to offer. And so you tell yourself at the beginning of the day, I'm gonna make a difference today. Because I know that today God has already pre- prepared in advance for me the work he has for me, according to Ephesians 2. I, I'm gonna claim that on my way into to work or, I, or when you're going to school. The enemy will constantly be putting words in front of you that will cause you to feel stressed and worried about what's happening in the world or what might happen. It wants you to live in fear. But we, we speak God's truth and we say today, I'm not anxious, I'm not worried, I'm not weighed down. That is not who I am. I have cast my burdens on the Lord and he cares for me, 1 Peter 5, 7. We say from 2 Timothy 1, 7 today, I'm not afraid, I'm not weak. I don't have the spirit of fear. I have a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. I'm I'm not afraid. I have the spirit of God's power in me. That's, That's who I am because of Jesus. If we think about problems and sad things and negative things, it adversely affects the release of our joy. But I'll tell you something that does release joy, and that's hope. Hope is such a powerful word. Now hope is an aggressive expectation that something good is about to happen to me at any moment. Hope is about your expectations. So let me ask you, what are you expecting from life? What are you expecting today? Psalm 119, 147, I rise early to cry out for help and to put my hope in your words. He says, I start every morning talking to you, I cry out in prayer, and listening to you, I read your word. And he says, I look for the hope in your word. If you feel pretty hopeless about your situation, you're not spending enough time in the promises of God because they're there. He says, I start my day with hope. Are you starting your day with hope or with despair? Get into agreement with God and you will see amazing things happen in your life. If I I do not have one day of my life that goes by that I don't confess the Word of God out loud. Every day of my life, I mean every day, I still say, I am the righteousness of God through Christ. I am a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away and all things become brand new. All through the day, I am well able. I will overcome this obstacle. I will defeat this sickness. I will rise out of lack and struggle. When you think like that, the creator of the universe goes to work. Miracles are set into motion. There is no victory in life without a fight. There is no sunrise without a night. There is no purchase without a cross, and there is no crown without a cost. Your life embraces faith, and you wallow, if you wallow in doubt, you will never celebrate victory. Satan attacks every person that God is getting ready to promote. When God gets ready to promote you, no one can keep you down. Keep your head up, keep your eyes focused, turn it on the cross, focus on the word. Take this, put it in your mouth, speak it and believe it and you will achieve the impossible dream. Stop saying I can't. Get it out of your mouth, get it out of your mind. There's nothing you cannot do. If you and God are doing a righteous thing, the impossible can be done. 
It can be done. It can be done. Stop saying if. Say I will by God's grace. Stop saying it's impossible. Nothing is impossible to those that believe. Nothing. Stop saying, I don't know the right people. You know, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, those people have lots of power. Don't look at how big the problem is. Look at how big your God is. He parted Red Seas. He closed the mouths of lions. He brought the dead back to life. That obstacle is no match for him. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. When you believe, all things are possible. Get your thoughts going in the right direction. The scripture says, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Not some of the time, not most of the time, but all of the time. It may be tough now, but keep the right perspective. Victory is in your future. Healing is in your future. Abundance, breakthroughs, freedom is coming your way. And yes, the giants may be big, but our God is bigger. Nothing in the world can take the place of divine persistence. Talent will not. Nothing in the world is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Persistence and determination alone will reach the goal. Life is like a wheelbarrow. Barrel. You get nowhere until you start pushing. Press on, press on, press on. You fall down, get up, try again. You fail, forget the failure. Failure is a great teacher. Wash it off and keep moving until you reach the objective. Adversity exposes your thought life toward God. Adversity comes to all men. The brightest crowns that are worn in heaven have been polished and glorified through the furnace of tribulation and adversity. Gold is tried in fire, and the righteous are tried in the furnace of adversity. Adversity does not make a man either weak or strong, but it reveals what you are. Proverbs 24, 10, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Why? Because you're not doing it in your strength, you're doing it in His. You're not fighting this battle on your own. You have the most powerful force in the universe fighting for you. He's pushing back forces of darkness, keeping that sickness from taking you out, moving the wrong people out of the way. Negative thinking is contagious. All around us, there's negative news. How bad the sickness is, how bad the economy is, analysts telling us what could happen. If you keep dwelling on that, then you're going to end up afraid, worried, panicked, thinking you're not going to make it. When you think like that, it's a negative cycle that keeps drawing in more fear, more worry, more defeat. Do not fear anything except the Lord God Almighty. If you fear Him, you need fear nothing else. He will keep you safe. I wonder how many times we're telling ourselves what we can't do. When the truth is, you have already been equipped to handle it. You have strength for all things. When God created you, He put in you everything you need to fulfill your destiny. Now quit telling yourself what you can't do and how it's not going to work out. The way to get in tune with God is to think what He says about you. Not what you feel, not what the experts say, not what the economy says, but what the Most High God has spoken over you. Learn to enjoy your life, not the one that somebody else has got that you want. See, our whole job here on the earth is to glorify God. It's not to get ahead and be the president of the company and you know, be world famous, and it's just to glorify God and to enjoy God. Don't just serve God, enjoy God. Enjoy being God's child. Enjoy the little corner of life that He has given you. So what if your house is not as big as somebody else's? Or you can't buy as expensive a clothes as somebody else's? Or you weigh 10 pounds more than somebody else does? Those are not the things that our joy should be tied up in. You plant your seeds of faith and you believe that God is working 
And while you're waiting, you enjoy the life that you have. We have to get over this thinking, I'll enjoy life when, I'll be glad when. Not when, now. Be strong and courageous. Fear not, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And if you started every day of your life with that verse, things would change. Your attitude would change. Your disposition would change. Your actions would change. I think it's especially important to what you think when you first get up in the morning. I think that we need to, I mean, at least for me, I find the enemy will make a bid for my mind early in the morning. Sometimes before I ever put my feet on the floor. And so one of the things that you can do early in the morning is say, I am going to have a good day. Whatever I need to deal with today, I can deal with it because God is with me. He won't let more come on me than what I can bear. So if you think strong, you're going to be strong. We prefer no problems and no challenges. That certainly would be my first prayer. God, I'd love to have no problems today. But I think we all know that there's very few days that are like that in reality. And I want to encourage you every day of your life, depend on God to give you the strength that you need. You can't just be strong. You have to depend on God to be strong through you. I don't even pray anymore, God, give me strength. I say, God, you are my strength. He is our strength. We draw strength from God when we spend time with Him on a daily basis. And that's why I recommend do it early. I mean, even if you only think that you can manage five minutes, I mean, get up and before you do anything else, spend some time with God. Let Him know that you need Him, that you don't even begin to think that you can have a successful day without Him. Draw your strength from Him. The basis of our courage is not how strong I am. The basis of our courage is God. God is the ultimate one who determines our life and how we face the circumstances of life. Many of God's people live in utter defeat as they face their daily work in life because they won't believe what God said. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, neither be that dismayed. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let me ask this. What more do you need than the promise, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go? What more do you need than that? And yet there are some people who would say, yeah, but you don't know my circumstances. I know who does. God knows everybody's circumstances. He knows where you came from, knows your strength and your weaknesses. He knows your unbeliefs. He knows your beliefs. He knows what you struggle with. He knows everything about every one of us. When we're going through challenges, one of the things that the devil loves to tell us, one of the thoughts that he likes to keep putting in our head over and over is, I can't do this. It's just too much for me. It's too hard. I can't do this. I can't take it. And today, I just want to tell you that you are stronger than you think you are. The enemy wants us to think that we're weak, that we can't do it. It's too much for us. It's overwhelming. It's too hard. But the truth is, is that if you think strong, you'll be strong. And if you think weak, you're going to be weak. God wants you to know, and he wants you to begin to think I can do whatever I need to do through Christ, who is my strength. And I am stronger than I think I am. And the truth is, is if you think you can't, you can't. And if you think you can, you can. Whatever situation, circumstances you're facing, here's what you do. You come to God each day, and Lord, you said, here's what you said. You said, be strong and very courageous, that you'd be with me in this. I'm going to trust you. You said, well, how many times do I have to say that? Every day. And depending upon the nature of it, several times a day. Or many times a day, whatever. One thing for certain, God 
will not fail you. He can't because he's God. He may not have worked the circumstances out exactly like you think he would, but he will. In other words, whenever you and I turn to God, we have the promise that holy, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God will be with us no matter what. I just want you to know that you can start today living boldly and without fear. Jesus is in you. He's for you. He's with you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so we can live freely. We can go out and we can try things. We don't have to be afraid of failure. You are capable of amazing things. But if you don't think you are, then you will let challenges defeat you. Whenever you look through the eyes of doubt and unbelief, you're going to fail. But when you and I are walking by faith and we're trusting God, He may challenge you to do things you think, well, how, how's that going to work? If God tells you to do something and you're confident of what He's saying, you just obey Him. You can go through all kinds of difficulty, hardships, and problems with confidence and joy in your heart when you are trusting God and believing that He'll do what He said. God has put so much ability in us. I don't think any one of you has any idea how much ability that you have. I mean, God-given, God-ordained ability on the inside of you. And once again, I know that some of you are hurting so bad right now, and maybe your pain has been so bad, you even just feel really confused. And you know what? If you can't seem to grasp anything that I'm saying today other than this, I want you to remember that you are stronger than you think you are, and you can do whatever you need to do. And nothing is too great for God. Not, there's nothing you face that He can't handle. God understands our fears. Here's the problem we have sometimes. If we can't figure out how God's going to do something, we don't believe Him. The only thing God may say to you facing a challenge is be strong and very courageous. Put your trust in me. Rely upon me. Just see what I do. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to figure out what God's going to do. God knows exactly what He's going to do. Let me tell you something. If you really know God and you know the Word of God, you are a giant killer. You don't have to be afraid of giants. You know what? We've all got something going on in our life. Maybe not today, but at different times that we think is just bigger than us, more than we can stand, more than we can take. You know what I think? I think sometimes we have an issue in front of us and God is encouraging us to go forward, but we think it to death. We stare at the giants too long and we think too long about everything that could happen and everything that might happen and maybe even things that we've tried to do in the past that haven't worked. Sometimes you need to move when you feel like you have the confidence and you feel like you have the courage and not just keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. Let me tell you something, the Bible says that we are more than conquerors. And God has a plan for your life. And there's nothing that you've been through that you cannot recover from because you are stronger than you think you are. Be strong and very courageous. That one verse is enough to take you through anything in life you face. You can take that verse all the way to the grave. So I think many times people face situations and circumstances in life that if they just had that one verse, be strong and courageous, don't, don't, don't fear anything, set your mind upon God. But oftentimes situations arise and our first response is fear. Our first response ought to be, okay, God, be strong and courageous, which simply means I'm setting my mind upon God to face this with me. So whatever we go through, if we're trusting God, then we can be confident that God never allows more to come on us than what we can bear. So when you feel like, I can't take any more, another good thing to say is, I will not have more than what I can deal with. God promises me. So instead of thinking, I can't take this one more day, 
you know, you can say, well, I'd rather not have it one more day, but whatever it is, I can do it.